So this is a Swift Conqueror 580, going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, you've got your hitch, jockey wheel and handbrake, and the power lead to the car. This is something we'll demonstrate to you in person while you're here on site. You've got your gas regulator on the bulkhead of the van, and your gas yellow valve on the side there is to shut off the gas supply to pass the regulator itself to the van. You've also got your ATC light on the front of the van there as well. Coming down this side of the van, you've got your Audi heating flue and your wind down legs on either side of the front. And we've also then got our water pump connection dropping into the act roll as you can see here. Later on in the video, I'll demonstrate the motor mover to you and I'll put a battery in place in here just to demonstrate that. Um, and then I'll demonstrate what, how it all works and how to engage it, etc. against the wheel. You've then got your mains power lead coming into the caravan, so we're connected to mains and water at the moment, so you can see everything working as it should. Then got your motor mover and wheel nuts, obviously I've already spoken to you about the motor mover which we'll come back to, and then we've got our wheel nuts which will talk to 120 newton meters prior to the caravan being taken off site. We've got our grey waste pipes next up, so the, grey water, uh, so the water that goes in the front of the caravan has to come out somewhere, and that comes out through the grey waste pipes on the side of the caravan just here. That grey water is what comes from the shower and the sinks and not the toilet facilities on board the van. That's what we are going to come to next. The top here at the back of the van, we have this tank here which takes three and a half litres of fresh water and a cap full of the pink uh, flush chemical. Um, so you'd put, like I said, a cap full in and three and a half litres of water prior to using the van. We need to keep an eye on the level of that just to make sure it doesn't overfill. Or we don't um, put an empty on there. Um, so when you do go to the loo, you can actually flush the loo. The toilet cassette, pull the orange handle up and pull the toilet cassette towards you. The neck here is a waist neck, so you pull this neck out and you empty the waist out from the cassette through there. And on the back of the toilet cassette, you've got an orange pressure relief button, so when you're tipping the waist away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. When you are, uh, before you use the toilet cassette, you actually need to put a litre of water in there and a cap full, and when I say a cap full, I mean the grey cap here of the blue fluid so it breaks down any waste that goes into the cassette. On the back of the caravan you again see one down leg on either side. We've only got one down for the purpose of the handover video but normally you'd have all four legs down just to steady the caravan while you're in and out of the van. Coming down the other side of the van you've got your storage for underneath the bed. Um, so, that, so you can actually lift up the bed itself to access the storage or you can go through this locker on the outside of the van. Going further forward, we've got our 240 volt uh, 3pm plug where you can get power out to your awning. So for instance, if you wanted to have an external fridge, you can plug the fridge in outside of the van or um, potentially lights into an awning. You've got your storage locker for underneath the front bunks on the van and you've got your barbecue gas point at the front also. And again, you've got your wind down leg on this side as well. Coming inside of the van, I'm going to demonstrate how everything works on the inside. So first of all, above the door, you're going to need to turn on the main power. So just here on the control panel, you've got your main power switch. As you can see at the moment, all the power's turned on. You've got your um, awning light for the outside of the van, which will turn on by pressing the button just here, which will illuminate blue. You've got your dimming lights for above the top of the cabinet. And you can adjust the dimming level of those when they're on by going to dim level here and then adjusting the dim, lem up, the dim level on the arrow uh, pointing towards the screen. Below that you've got your roof lights for the caravan, so your main roof lights to go down the, in, uh, down the roof itself. And then you've got your water pump run down here which I'll come back to in a moment. And to the left of that you've got your heating and hot water control panel which again I'll come back to in a moment. First thing you're going to do, once you've got the power turned on, is go underneath the seat on the far right hand side of the caravan. And you're going to be looking for the yellow drain down valve, so that yellow valve you see there. That valve is going to be need to be parallel with the floor before you try and fill the water system, so the position it's in now essentially is parallel with the floor. If that valve is pointing upright towards the bottom of the seat, you will not be able to drain, uh, you'll, you'll not be able to fill the water system on board the caravan. You will need to make sure it's parallel so the water system does fill with water and once the water system is full you'd then be able to start filling or turning on the hot water systems whether that be on gas or electric but to fill it like i said valve parallel with the floor 
you'll come to each tap on board the caravan. Now you will actually notice that I've already filled the water system on this van. But to bleed the water system, you'll open all the taps up on the hot side. As you can see, we've got hot water coming out. But you'd open all the taps up on the hot side to allow all the air out of the system before you turn on the water pump and you'd leave them open until you've got water continuously running out of each tap. So as you can see, just to show you each tap working. And the shower also running away just that. So once you were ready to fill the water system and all the drain down valve the drain down valve shut and all the taps are open on the hot side, you'll come to the control panel above the door and you'll turn on the water pump switch and that is indicated by the blue light just here. The water system then will start to fill up and once the water system is full as it is now, you'd essentially turn off every tap in the caravan. So like I said, you always leave the taps open completely until you've got water coming out of every tap on board the caravan. Once the water system is full, you can come to the control panel above the door to the left-hand side of the main control panel and you can start thinking about warming your water on board the van. So you've got power on and off here for the control panel, so as you can see, power off. I'll turn it back on, power on. I've got an indicator here to say we're connected to mains power and I've got the current internal temperature of the caravan. Press menu and it'll take me into the options. So at the top here, we've got minus or plus for the heating level to set the internal temperature of the caravan. You can go right up to 30 degrees on the internal temperature. Below that, you have your water temperature. So currently the hot water is turned off. However, if I press the button here, you'll notice that line then start, uh, the triangle here then becomes half black, which means that that is the hot water turned on. And if I press the button again, so it's completely black, that will actually turn on the boost for the water system. I'm going to turn that off for now. Um, it's been on for quite a while today. Below that, you've got the amount of power coming into the caravan to operate the heating and hot water systems. This is completely separate to the um, electric, or this is completely individual to this control panel. This doesn't mean anything else on board the van. <clears throat> so you've got one, ki uh, one kilowatt, two kilowatts, or three kilowatts, depending on what caravan site you're on. If you're on a site, for instance, where you've only got 750 to 1,000 watts of power available, you will select the one kilowatt just here. If it was above that, you'd then select two or three kilowatts. But if you were on one, for instance, and you wanted to boost the heating and hot water systems, you could ignite the systems on gas by pressing the gas symbol at the bottom. The green light indicates it as ignited on gas. If it failed to ignite, it would actually come up with gas fail across the bottom of the screen down here. Again, I'm going to turn that off for now. So that is your heating and hot water control panel. You don't need to do anything with the heating and hot water tank or the hot, uh, the hot heating tank, should I say, which is in the cupboard just here. That tank you leave alone. You don't uh, drain that off at all. You don't need to do anything with it. That is essentially like the radiator on your car or the header tank on your car, should I say, where you put in your coolant. Next up, we're gonna go to the fridge. Very simple to operate. We've got power on. As you can see, the power's now come on. At the moment, we're connected to mains power. Uh, to change the power source, you're gonna use the arrows here. So you've got 12 volt for when you're towing down the road. You've got your gas, which self ignites on gas. And if it fails to ignite, it will flash the blue light on this side, which it has done at the moment. And then you've got your 240 mains just here. So to control the temperature of the fridge, you'll use the button just here, whether you're on gas or mains power. The 12 volt supply it'll do, from the car, it'll just work the fridge as a cool box. To turn the fridge back off, press and hold the power button and the fridge will turn off. Microwave, very much like your household microwave. As you can see, working as you'd expect it to. Cooker, again, very much the same as your household cooker. You've got your gas um, for your three rings on top and then electric on the back left hand ring. You've got a light for inside the cooker, as you can see there. Press the hold button, it'll come on. And your igniter just on the left hand side. To operate the toilet, you've got an electric flush on the toilet just here. That's why you have to fill the tank from the outside. 
and then you've got your toilet waste handle just here which you'd need to pull across to allow the waste to go down underneath the van into the waste cassette for the toilet itself. The next thing I'm going to go through is on the outside of the caravan and that will be the motor mover demonstration. So to operate the motor mover on the Swift Conqueror 580 or this particular unit that's fitted you need to come round to the other side of the van to where the battery locker is and you need to turn on the power key that's in the side locker so you turn that 90 degrees and that will turn the power onto the motor mover itself. At that point you'll come back round to the opposite side of the van and you'll press the two green buttons on the controller and then you can start thinking about engaging the motor mover against the wheel. So you'll press the central button here and the one with the green arrow which you'll see will move the motor mover itself up against the wheel Once the mover has stopped, you'll then be able to release the handbrake. So you'll push the handbrake off. And then you'll come back to your controller inside the caravan. And you'll grab the controller, and in theory we should have forwards. Backwards. Turn, turn, and then turn from the rear, so you're about to see the van go around the opposite way, and then round again, as you can see. You can get the caravan to spin on the spot by just pressing the two buttons opposite each other, and back the opposite way. And that is how you operate the mover. To disengage the mover, you'd pull the handbrake back on. You'd put the controller on. A, I'm just going to put it on a flight service for a moment so I can demonstrate it. You'd press the central button here in the red arrow to disengage it. And you'll notice the mover then starts making the noise again and disengaging. Now when the mover stops, it'll actually stop for a few seconds and it will start moving again, as in when it's retracting. The reason for that is it needs to reset itself, so as you can hear, it's now stopped. But then in a second, it'll adjust itself. Like so. And when it has stopped that second time, you can then turn the controller off. Also at that point you go around to the other side of the van and turn off the power key in the side locker also. Turn off the power as you can see and that is the 12 volt power to the motor movers then turned off. So like I said that was a Swift Conqueror at 580. If you have any questions please do give us a call here at the Caravan Company and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you very much. Bye bye.